All this and more coming up in today's special edition of Going Underground. Palestine is still the issue. The title of a sequel 2002 film by legendary journalist and filmmaker John Pilger is a sentiment seemingly unheeded by so-called mainstream media, even when the offices of NATO nation journalists are bombed by the UK, US, EU armed Israeli military. Joining me from Sydney is John Pilger. John, thanks so much for uh, coming on the show. You said uh, Palestine is the issue in the last century and in this century. How does it link everything from war and peace, atrocities, imperialism, information to neoliberalism? Well, Palestine is the center of, of a great imperial act. Uh, I've made two films called Palestine is Still the Issue. 28 years apart. I may make another one. It'll be called Palestine is still the issue because Palestine, un unless we understand the atrocity being imposed on Palestine and the right of people to defend themselves, the right of people to resist against an external outside force, a force that uh, uh, it becomes more extreme by the moment, and I'm talking about Israel, then we'll never understand how the world works. There's been a whole attempt to make Hamas the central issue of the reporting, and that's nonsense, as if Hamas is a, a peculiar demon. In fact, Ham Hamas and its military wing are part of a resistance, a resistance that was provoked by the Israelis, the real demon in this is, is Israel, but it's not simply Israel. I mean, this is as much uh, uh, a British and American war against Palestine as it is uh, an Israeli one. You know, just a few years ago, uh, the chief of the defense staff in Britain, Sir Nick Carter, visited uh, Israel, and uh, between himself and uh, uh, senior Israeli strategists, they draw up, drew up basically a secret plan, a partnership, a military partnership between Israel and Britain. In fact, it goes much deeper than that. It's, it's, a, it's an integration of the two military forces where you have uh, 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 Israelis being trained in in ordnance design in Britain, ordnance design as bombs, and British soldiers being trained in uh, in, in uh, uh, with 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 units that have been as the the IDF describes it as Palestinian tested. So the the. The integration of Britain, and especially the United States, which, which gives Israel $10 million a day, uh, is, is complete. So it is, in one sense, it's a, a British, European, American war against the people of Palestine, who are doing one thing, and that is refusing, exercising their moral and legal right to resist a brutal occupation. Britain says it's a friend of Israel. You know the two sidesism that is mandated under uh, broadcasting uh, restrictions, as it were, here, because uh, obviously when yeah. you're talking about atrocities, uh, as we know, Israel says the responsibility lies with Hamas. It is using civilians as human shields among journalists, schools and homes, and they gave fair warning. And Dominic Rabb, the foreign secretary here, says the UK condemns Hamas attacks on civ civilians and reaffirms Israel's right to self-defense. Well, right. Fine, Ashton, you had to say that, but there are not two sides. And actually, the very notion of two sides is obscene. Uh, it's like people looking up at... Uh, at German bombs during the Blitz and saying, ah, but there's two sides here. Uh, you know, the, 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 the Palestinians have crude rockets, and when they're accused of indiscriminate shelling, yes, the, the, the rockets are crude. But on the other hand, Israel is doing discriminate targeting. It's, 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 it's deliberately attacking, as it's always done, civilian targets. And we had the spectacle the other day of a high-rise building in which the, 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 the media 
almost all Palestinian, certainly non-Western media, uh, we, we, we had the spectacle of this building being blown up by the Israelis with the nonsensical story that it was harboring Hamas. It wasn't. And all those journalists there are witnesses to that. It's like the BBC reporter Jeremy Bowen who talks about a war between Israel and Hamas. Bowen knows that's wrong. It's an attack on an occupied people by the occupier, Israel, backed by great powers. Do you think these journalists, you mentioned Jeremy Bowen, the Middle East editor of the state-mandated BBC, who had to apologize previously for being pro-Palestine uh, in his reporting, do you think they understand that uh, firing stun grenades into the Al-Aqsa Mosque on the equivalent of Christmas Eve is like uh, doing that to the Vatican on Christmas Eve. I mean, it was Eid al Fatr. Uh, it's, it's a bit like that, uh, bombing the Vatican or sending the soldiers into the Vatican. Well, if they don't know, what are they doing out there? I mean, you don't actually have to be in the Holy Land to understand that. The provocation, the attack on Palestinians and the, the attack on, on, on the holiest mosque in, in, uh, in, in Islam uh, was entirely unprovoked. And the, the fact that and Hamas warned uh, the Israelis, stop these attacks on our people in Jerusalem, stop them now or we will resist. And so they resisted, uh, as every people has a right to do. The Western media, uh, you know, where are they in Gaza? Yes, there are a lot of Palestinian journalists risking their lives and uh, uh, Muslim journalists and Arabic speaking journalists. But where are all the high paid Western journalists? It looks to me like a boycott of Gaza. You think uh, there was a time when journalists were tried harder to get into Gaza? Obviously the journalists are saying, they don't explicitly say, but it's Israel that actually prevents them and doesn't give them the passes. And I should say, Israel obviously says there were rocks at Al-Aqsa Mosque and uh, Israel says they give warnings. Although that's disputed by some of the children who've uh, seen their parents being killed. Well, we know that. Israel is a lie machine and has been proven to be that. But I, I think we do have to understand the responsibility in Britain. It had the responsibility of uh, not only the present government, but the Labour Party is part of that. I mean, Starmer's Labour Party, uh, which allowed pro-Israel groups to, uh, to direct the policies of the Labour Party that, in effect, support this, this attack. When you have the, the shadow foreign secretary uh, saying that to criticise Israeli atrocities um, is anti-Semitic, then we're in, we're in Lewis Carroll world, really. The BBC had a piece after uh, some of the atrocities in the past week saying, but why is it all these protesters, uh, we saw that some of the largest uh, uh, protests in the world here in London, but I know they've been all around the world. Why is it they don't protest about the Syrian government or against the, according to uh, Western sources, genocide committed by China? I know we're gonna talk about China in part two. Wh why are these protesters uh, about Palestine at all? Why don't they protest against anything? Why don't they protest to the Australian government about uh, the genocide against the indigenous people? Uh, why don't they protest to the US government about the dozens of countries that is overthrown and about the, 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 the great numbers of people that is, that is, whose deaths it has caused and whose dispossession it has caused? It's a, it's a, it, it, it's a banal argument. Uh, uh, people are protesting about an atrocity that is going on before our eyes and we're allowed to see that atrocity for, because of some of the bravest journalists and I know some of these people, photographers, uh, cameramen, people whose building we saw blown up. In one of my films, The War You Don't See, there is a horrific sequence in which an Israeli s sniper guns down a Palestinian cameraman who's lying wounded on the ground and then they continue to shoot at his legs. He was then um, uh, so seriously wounded 
uh, he probably wouldn't walk again. I mean, that's, that's the kind of bravery that these people, in mostly Palestinians, I have to say, mostly Palestinians, the high-paid BBC people and others are just not there. Now, yes, it may be very difficult. The Israelis, who, uh, uh, who, whose domain they seem to cover very well, won't let them in. Why don't they get in, regardless? There are indeed tunnels that they keep telling us about uh, from Egypt. Uh, uh, Congresswoman uh, Tlaib in the United States, a Palestinian uh, extraction, arguably fell into a trap uh, trying to uh, uh, attack Hamas. But um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, this rising star in the Democrat Party, said that apartheid states are not democracies. Uh, Tony Blinken, uh, someone who supported uh, the destruction, uh, certainly it ended up like that, of uh, Africa's richest per capita company country uh, Libya said um, said he wasn't convinced about uh, the AP Al Jazeera building being uh, full of Hamas operatives is it changing in the United States if it's not changing in London is that a change I don't know if it's a change you know Biden and Obama uh, were uh, uh, in 2014 during uh, the last Israeli killing fest on Palestine, they were killing something like an average of 11 children a day, and yet Obama and Biden uh, uh, arranged the resupply of precision weapons to Israel. Biden is now the president. I don't see any difference. The only difference, the only resistance is, is the resistance. That's what's different of in this attack there is a real resistance and that that should be matched by people going beyond their governments beyond their parliaments and going into the streets that's the only way whether the, whether or not that succeeds i don't know but there is no other way you suggested a, a link between those pictures of of uh, atrocities coming from Palestine and the British army and the, and the British state. Has uh, Israel, I know they've uh, been accused of killing journalists in the past, borrowed from the NATO playbook uh, when it famously uh, blew up Belgrade TV in Yugoslavia in this destruction of the, uh, the big tower in Gaza housing media organizations? It's a lot more dangerous now than, than when I was a war correspondent, in, uh, particularly in Southeast Asia, because now... Uh, your side, that is the side representing the people whose newspaper or broadcasting organization sent you, are aiming for you. You're a target. Uh, and, uh, but at the very least, these Palestinian cameramen and photographers and journalists, they are targets. But every, all journalists now are targets. Go into some bride's church in London into the corner that pays tribute to journalists who've died in, in uh, covering, covering wars. And there they are. The names, the names uh, are listed in the last few years uh, that indicate the trend that uh, the US in particular uh, doesn't give a damn whether you're a journalist or whether you have a, a lanyard hanging around your neck that says journalist. You'll get shot. The Israelis, of course, not only don't give a damn, they don't even consider it. You'll get shot, period. John, I'll stop you there. More from John Pilger after the break when we discuss double standards from China to the torture of Julian Assange.